this lecture is a series of actually breaks down to about seven lectures on the thermal analysis of buildings. The first one is calculating transmission, uh, how to calculate transmission through the buildings. In the previous lecture, we talked about uh, the conductance of materials and their ability to insulate. Uh, and so now we're going to talk about how that works in the case of heat transfer. Um, heat transfer, also referred to as simply as heat, is the movement of thermal energy from one thing to another thing of different temperature. Uh, of course, that's always moving from the thing that's hotter to the thing that's colder. There are three different ways in which heat can transfer. The one that we're primarily going to focus on right now is conduction, and that's the actual movement of heat through uh, a material, through direct contact. And then, of course, there's convection, which is through a movement uh, of a fluid, such as air or water. Uh, probably the most common convection is uh, a hot uh, cup of uh, coffee where you blow across the cup of coffee, right? That's convection. You're removing the heat from the, the uh, coffee by blowing across the top of it and make it more uh, cooler. And then, of course, radiation. And the most common form of radiation, uh, at least in buildings, is through electromagnetic waves such as light. So we're going to look at the thermal loads, what we call the thermal loads, heat gain and heat loss uh, on a building. And th these are, you know, the basic loads that uh, on a building, starting with surface transmission. That's the transmitting of heat through surfaces such as the walls, the floors, and uh, ce uh, ceiling or roof. And then, of course, through fenestrations, which are glass, uh, once again, conductance fenestration transmission and conductance through of the glass and then heat gain by the glass through light passing through the glass and turning into heat and then something called infiltration and so there's those four there which make up what are called the external loads of the building because uh, those loads come from the outside of the building and then there's the internal loads which are ventilation people plug loads lights and HVAC and we'll talk about all of these in detail so if we're talking about heat loss, we're talking about the movement of heat from inside the building to the outside of the building. Uh, so heat, this is normally what happens uh, in the winter. Of course, the, the temperature inside the building is, you know, 74 and the outside of the building is 30 or 40 degrees. And so cold is out here, heat is in here and heat is trying to get to cold. So it's going to be passing through the ceiling, uh, transmitting through walls, uh, through glass, uh, sliding glass doors or windows. Okay, and so that's transmission, what we call transmission of uh, heat. And then, of course, through the ground itself right here. The other is what we call heat gain. And there's a variety of ways in which we gain heat inside of a building. Uh, but when we're talking about uh, transmission, we're talking about, once again, the movement of heat from the outside of the building to the inside. And of course, in the summer, the outside of the building is 96 degrees and the inside of the building is 74. And so heat is trying to move from uh, this uh, hot to the cold of the interior. And of course, the common transmissions uh, are through the roof again, uh, through the walls, as we can see here, through windows once again, and then, uh, of course, through direct solar gain. Uh, this is where radiation is involved. And so those are the, the most common transmission. So we're going to focus right now on uh, heat loss and heat gain uh, from transmission. So one thing we need to remember or understand is uh, how energy 
uh, interacts with matter or a surface. And of course, when we're talking about energy, we're talking about heat and light, okay? And of course, transmittance is one way when uh, energy strikes or hits a surface, uh, it can be transmitted through that surface to the other side, uh, assuming there is less heat on the other side of the, of the surface. It can be absorbed into the surface itself Okay, and never make it through the surface. Just be, just heat the subject, the surface up, or the, uh, and of course it can be bounced off or reflected, depending on the nature of the surface of this. We commonly associate this with light, but also uh, heat, in the form of thermal energy, can also be bounced off. And then, uh, if the energy is absorbed, it can be re-emitted or or radiated off the subject. Uh, to either the exterior or it might be radiated to the interior. The units that we normally use uh, in the inch-pound system or the uh, imperial system is uh, square feet and cubic feet, feet, square feet and cubic feet, square feet and cubic, uh, when we're talking about area. And then uh, the heat form, uh, unit that we use is a British thermal unit, okay, and and then heat flow is measured in the uh, heat in the form of BTU per hour, okay? and of course we measure temperature in Fahrenheit. So let's look at the first kind of basic. Uh, algorithm that we use to calculate the transmission of heat, either uh, heat loss or heat gain, in either words, heat either moving out of the building because it's colder outside or heat moving into the building because it's cooler inside the building than it is outside. And that formula is uh, the, the heat transfer Q, okay, what we're looking for here, which is in BTUs per hour, times the area of the surface times what is called the U value or the heat flow coefficient. Okay, this U value, we talked about U values, U factors, K's and C's, uh, and how we calculate those, and we'll go a little bit into that again. And then what we call the delta T or the difference between the inside temperature and the outside temperature, okay, in Fahrenheit. So let's just use as an example this little uh, transportable classroom, which is basically 30 feet uh, along this surface here. Okay, and so let's assume it's 30 feet here, and then nine feet tall. And what we're interested in is the amount of surface in the interior of the building, not the whole exterior of the bu building, but only that amount of the surface that actually uh, connects with the uh, conditioned space. And so what we want to do is calculate this, this transmission of heat, either as a heat gain or a heat loss. Okay. So let's take that surface. And if we do our little math, well, 9 times 30, of course, is 270 square feet. So now we have the area. Right, the area here, but we have a window right here or a door, and we have to subtract that because that's a different material or assembly. So we're going to then subtract that, okay, which is a four by six window, uh, which is 24 square feet, and we're going to subtract that from, of course, the 270. So our total square footage of the brick veneered uh, surface right here is of course 246 square feet and so that's going to be the area. So if we look at now we want to know the U factor or the U value uh, in this case the U value of this surface and how do we get that? Well as we talked about in the last uh, lecture the, the way to get a, a U value of the, an assembly like this is to take the R value of all the different materials and add them together. 
So uh, what I've done is, is I've gone through, and you can see here all the different R values. Okay, uh, 0 0.5 is the R value of uh, the gypsum board on the interior. There's an airspace, a one inch airspace in there, uh, well, a three quarter inch air gap, which is 0 0.9 uh, R value. Uh, the R value of the uh, foam right here is 10. And then, of course, the uh, uh, let's see, what am I looking at here? Uh, oh, there's the brick, and there's an airspace, and there's the uh, concrete block. Okay. Of course, the R, highest R value, of course, is the polystyrene. And so if we add all those together, we get 13.64 uh, for the total R value of the wall. And then, of course, to get the U value, we have to take the reciprocal of the of the R value of the assembly and of course that's 0 0.073 so if we divide 1 divide that by 13.64 we get the U value so now we have an area and we have a U value and uh, this just goes into more so we have the thermal resistance and R value the higher the number the more, greater the resistance as we talked about before uh, so the more insulating power it has. And, of course, when we talk about a U-value, the lower that number, okay, has a, a, a greater resistance to the transfer of energy. Right. Remember that our values are accumulative. That means that we can take our values and add them together or multiply them. If we have three materials that are an R value of 5, for instance, uh, we can multiply those five, that 5 R values times... Uh, 3, which would be 15, and the R value would be total. So you, if you can add them together, you can multiply them together. Mm. The next thing we want to find is the delta T. And the delta T is the driving force of how much energy is going to transfer. And just to give you an example of that, uh, if, the del if the interior temperature, okay, if the interior temperature, say, is 74 degrees, and the exterior temperature is 74 degrees, okay, there is no difference in the interior, uh, interior and exterior temperature. Therefore, there will be no heat transfer because there's no heat to go to something colder. There's nothing colder to go to. Okay, so uh, so if you take the 74 and you subtract it from the 74 on the outside, that gives you zero. And as we know, anything that is zero times anything else is also going to be zero. Okay, So there would be no heat loss or heat gain. So what we want to do is calculate the delta T of the space. So if we want an interior, say our heating uh, during the uh, winter, we don't, we, we're happy with 68 degrees inside the house. But outside, it's 32 degrees, okay? And so the delta T is, of course, going to be the TI, 68, minus the TO. And so if we go here, 68 degrees minus 32 is 36 degrees. Okay. Now, just the reverse, if it's during the summer, and we have 96 degrees outside, and we want to achieve 74 on the inside, then once again, we're going to put them in the same order. The TI is still going to go first, and the TO is still going to go second. But what we're going to do, you'll notice that when we subtract a higher number, of course, from a, a lower number, we get 32 degrees. Okay. And so uh, a minus 32 degrees, I'm sorry. And so that minus 32 degrees means, uh, we'll see what that means in just a few minutes, okay? Uh, so now that we have all the our numbers that we need, our area, uh, our U value, and our delta Ts to calculate the transmittance uh, through uh, the brick assembly, uh, the concrete block and brick veneer wall, uh, so if we multiply 246 times 0 0.0733 and then times the delta T 36, we're going to get 649 BTUs per hour that's going to pass through that wall. That's assuming that uh, 
the temperature doesn't change. If the temperature changes, of course, uh, the TI goes up or down, uh, that the driving force uh, increases or decreases. And of course, this number would increase or decrease. Uh, if we're in the summer and our delta T is now a minus 32, once again, we multiply these three numbers together and we're going to get 577.02. What I want you to notice, because this is negative, this is negative. Okay, so this is it's supposedly a negative 577 degrees um, BTUs per hour. And so that's how much energy we have to subtract from the interior. So the interior is going to gain that much energy, and therefore we've got to subtract out 577. If we're in a winter or heating mode, then 649 is the amount of energy that's going to go out of the building, and so we need to add that much energy. So the plus and the minus help you understand, do, are we subtracting energy? Do we have to put in an air conditioning system that will subtract this energy, or do we put in uh, a heater which will add this much energy? Okay. So once again, here are how the different numbers uh, were determined, and of course 0 0.0733 is the U value of that, and of course the area over here. So basically, to, for any kind of assembly, all we need to know is the R value of all the materials, take the inverse of that to get us the U value, and then we need the area of that particular material uh, minus all the materials that are in that surface that are different because we're going to calculate them sec separately. The next uh, lecture we're going to talk about how to calculate the heat loss and gain through